from they show how they share that as a and see every people are pushing each other. Answer. Ghana man paying. Aku Fado, President Aku Fado. Ah, other no man, other people man. Ah, other again pa. Other the above four to nineteen year of return. Other to zero for every people for. On them go born in the O P O B I N M. Yen ran me will pay ho, and you will pay ya. What the children want? What form the woman will pay her? What bear no? One papa, a queen busy wearing him. Ah, Monday, yet in comb. The bear queen, I know, and sir. Marcus Gavi, O Queen Cassie Marcus Gavi, and sir. Matthew Luther King, Kwame Nkrumah. Harriet Tubman. And I'm more good. Can we watch your head? And my young papa. I'm going to watch it. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, more yay, or you'll be an open if you more boy, you're gonna chill out in a bun or prowa on Piazanum. More boy, then President Nanaku Fado, no adjun bun, one number of power to you, no Nitsi and Ewa on Fantiado. I push my opinion, my father, and sir, I born us all one by yet, no fianco. Pa. Pa. The list of dignitaries that have joined us. The first is going to be Kwame Boateng, who is a member of the Ghana Tourism Authority and a chairman of the Business Development Committee of the Ghana Tourist Board. We have Akwesi Ewa Ababio. He is the director of, Di of Diaspora Affairs and chairman of the Year of Return. <laughs> and let me stress, he's the director of Diaspora Affairs at the presidency. So anything that has to do with the diaspora at the president's office in Ghana, he is the man in charge of it. Akwesi Ewa Abebio. Let's give it up to him. Yes. Next, we have lawyer Jerry Ahmed Shaib. He is the chief executive officer of the Coastal Development Authority in Ghana. Let's give it up to him. 
And just so I can introduce him some more, the coastal uh, develop Ghana is made up of a very huge coastline. So he is in charge of making sure that development does come to this coastal area. So he is, uh, with the support of ministries and agencies, developing plans to uplift the coastal areas of Ghana. Let's give it up for the good job that he is doing as CEO. We also have Dr. Ousu Jabin. Dr. Ousu Jabin. He is the patron of the Central and Western Association of Greater Cincinnati. That is a union or is an association that is made up of people that come from the Central and Western regions of Ghana. Dr. Ousu. Let's give it up to him. We also have in our midst our host, our host, Professor Samuel Amwakon. He is the Council General to, uh, of Ghana to New York, Professor Samuel Amwakon. And <laughs> Professor is our host today. Professor is our host today. He is hosting us. We have Rabbi Kohen. Rabbi Kohen, he is the executive director of Panafest uh, Pan Foundation in Ghana. He is the executive director, the executive director of Panafest. I've known this man for, for some time, and he is doing incredible, incredible job back home. You all should be proud of him. You all should be proud of him. We also have here, Nana Obukase Ampa, the Apejahen of Asebu traditional area and the CEO of the Asebu Pan African village. He is a, he is a man that just poured libation to our ancestors. You can look around, enjoy tradition. Those are the kings, those are the chiefs of the Ghanaian community here in the United States. And just so I don't, just so I, I don't miss it, the, the paramount chief, the chief behind everything we're going to do here today, the chief that was generous enough to willingly give out the lands, I have here Oketechi Dr. Amenfi the seventh. Oketechi Dr. Amenfi the seventh. He is the Omayhen of Asebu traditional area. He is the Omayhen. Let us all give it up. Honorable Cleophus Miller, the President General of UNIA. UNIA, the Universal Negro Improvement Association. Cleophus Miller. Let's give it up to him. Asebu traditional area and the CEO of Asebu Pan African Village Project to come and tell us the purpose of this gathering. Thank you very much. Well, to begin with, Asebu is a chiefdom in Ghana. The territory is right next to Cape Coast. It's about 15 minutes, the town, the first town of Asebu is about 15 minutes drive to the Cape Coast Slave Dungeon, and about 20 minutes drive to the Elmina Slave Dungeon. And uh, we made up of 45,000 villages, 45 different towns and villages. And our overlord is Okotechia Memphis the Seventh. Okotechia Memphis the Seventh is a university professor at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology by profession. And he's a member of the Preferred National Development Planning Commission. They are in charge of planning our development from the short, medium, and to the long term. So they will bring out the blueprint for any government. It, it doesn't matter. Governments can change, but they don't change. They bring development agenda for the various governments that comes to follow. And then uh, we have beautiful 
attractions at uh, Asebu. One of them is the Obu Kesedo. Obu Kesedo is the sacred stone that uh, has become known as the Wee Stone. If you make it there, if you ever make your way to Ghana, you try to come to Asebu, you lay your hand on the stone, you say whatever you want in life to happen, and it does happen. We have people from different faiths. It can be Hindu, Muslim, Christian, whatever. They do come over to say their prayer, and it happens. So, we are look, in short, we are looking to do a pan-African village. That is a community that we envisage to be self-sustainable for our brothers and sisters who are willing and interested in returning home. So I would like to thank you all once again for coming. Nana is here and I can't say much. So thank you. Thank you once again for coming. Medasi. Up as he comes to deliver a speech from the president of Ghana. Let's give it up to Mr. Ewa Abebio. Greetings from Ghana. From His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, the Commander in Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces and the Head of State, quickly introduce a little bit of the office that I represent to enable you to know how you have to deal with us or how you can relate to us. The office, as has been mentioned here, is the Director, Directorate of the Diaspora Affairs at the Office of the President. Previous to two years ago, there used to be a Diaspora Bureau at the Foreign Affairs, which is still available as a unit and a scale down in view of the prominence that we have given to this Diaspora Affairs Office of the President. And um, for a very good reason, since our time in office, we have been leading in championing and giving it a political force, for which reason so many um, initiatives have been supported and elevated to the level that it rightly deserves. The president believes that the diaspora represents a force that can be applied for our development. The president recognizes the, the, the human capital that there is out there not just in respect of the expertise and the capital that you can bring to bear on our development, but also in respect of the interrelationships, the networks that you have outside that you can also you know, bring to enable us to develop our country. And for which reason, I think um, I need to quickly come down to the reason why we are here, even though I'm going to leave it to the appropriate people to really tell you about it. It's important that I also make mention of it in respect of the fact that I have traveled all the way to UK specifically to enable us to oversee how this whole thing is going to pan out and how you know, well it should be taken by everyone who is involved and how we should be looking at the interest of the diaspora community in respect of all these initiatives. So I'm here today to support this um, initiative. The president made mention of it in his speech during the Panafest um, um, celebration uh, event in Cape Coast. And I think the chief also mentioned it in the presence of the president when uh, he visited him at his palace. So we are very much aware that um, it has the support of the president. The rest of us have come together to make sure that whatever the president wants and whatever he wishes for, we can work together to make sure that it comes to fruition. So we are here today to offer that critical support, that critical um, support that is going to be helpful in making sure that the assurances can be there, can be given to make sure that this project can go ahead as required, as you know, we intend it to be. I think... Um, I'm going to be around even after this speech, so I will leave it here for now to be able to um, take questions and then give some answers if need be. So on this note, I'd like to say how grateful I am that I've come here to have your community, to meet the community and to say 
um, some kind words to you. Thank you. And, but it's very, very significant. It's very, very significant. The president of Ghana does know about this. I have a few more people that I'm going to introduce. Uh, we have in our midst, Mr. Alfred Thompson. He's a former deputy managing director of the National Investment Bank of Ghana. Yes. We also have here uh, the Odikro of Amamuma, Nana Bochomomu Dukakra. Yes. The Odikro of Amamuma. Yes. Yes. He, he is uh, a chief in one of the towns that is very close to uh, the University of Cape Coast in Ghana. We also have here uh, the chief of the Ghanaian, the Asantiman Hene of the Ghanaian community here in bronze, Nana Pacho Maumusukakra. And we also have Nana Enim from the Asantiman, Nana Pacho Maumusukakra. So as you can see, we only don't we don't only have uh, let's give it up for Rabbi Cohen. Let's give it up. First and foremost, I would like to begin by giving all honor, praise, and glory to the supreme creator of the universe, the one by whom we live, move, and have our being, and to the spirit of our great African ancestors upon whose shoulders we stand. This is one of those cycles. This whole thing started with the commemoration of the 400-year anniversary of a part of our history as Africans taken from our motherland to the diaspora. We know that this history is longer than 400 years. But the 400 years could not be ignored because it is also significant. There's a landmark in there. And that the president of Ghana at least was visionary enough to say that something significant should happen on the African continent. That lets our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters know that those of us in Africa have not forgotten them. And where there may have been some lapses, our current situation gives us the opportunity to make up for those lapses and to heal ourselves so that Ghana would put itself in a position to make a proclamation about this 400 years, it's time to return. Not only physically by taking a tour, but it's time for us to return to the center of our African mind and our African consciousness. And that's a process. Because it was a process, it was a process that removed us from our African thought. It was one thing to capture our ancestors and to put them in dungeons and to put them on boats and to change their geographical location. But it was a hard time capturing the African mind and removing our African mind from us. And it was a process involved. And they were not successful in removing the African mind out of every African and the diaspora. And our presence here is a testimony to that. All the years that they talk about slavery, They've minimized the talk about resistance. So when the president put this call out, it's the call, first of all, to those of us who have maintained the resistance and kept the love for Mother Africa in our heart. So when I say that, I say that we are in a historical moment. 100 years ago, our ancestors were another uh, historical point. We rose up as African people with the call of the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Gavi, who said, back to Africa. 1919 was one of the greatest years of the UNIA. We're 100 years away from that, and the ancestral call is calling out in our DNA. That's why I'm happy that we have the UNIA represented here today, and it's top representative the President General. Because we have to know that we're operating in a historical context, and we have to know that we have the support of our ancestors and the initiative that we are taking this journey on. So this is not a time for preaching or not even teaching. It's just to give a testimony. But I have to set it up. Because my portion today is to say that, give a small testimony on what it is like to turn, return home. I returned back home this month, 25 years ago. It was my anniversary. I left here in October of 1994 and made my residence in Ghana. 
I moved out on faith. I say I moved out on faith because we were talking about citizenship in Ghana and dual citizenship since Ghana became a fourth republic in 1992. And at that time, some of us thought it was right around the corner, right around the corner. And 25 years is up, and it's been right around the corner. We have to think of it in prophetical time. But as the director of the Diaspora Affairs that the Office of the President just stated, and he's been a champion at this cause, I'd like for you to acknowledge his work again, because he's been an advocate to make sure that those of us, that those of us who are living in Ghana and have lived in Ghana for a significant amount of time and have proven that Ghana is their home and where they want to be, he has fought the good fight to ask that the president give them recognition to take on their dual citizenship. So over 250 Africans from the diaspora, United States, Caribbean, and all over, who have applied have been interviewed, and as he stated here today, will soon be awarded their citizenship. But this vision and dream today that we are supporting comes from one of our royalty in Ghana, who was inspired a year ago by the president's proclamation of the year of return. And the vision he had was that something tangible should go along with this. Tangible is land being offered for those who are serious about returning from the diaspora and want to make an attachment because our detachment was in so many compartments, as I just indicated, whether it's mentally, physically, or whatever. But we were taken from land and being engaged in so many conversations in the diaspora before I returned to Ghana and still in those conversations as you, many of you go back and forth, we also feel we should have an easier access to land. And Nana's vision ties into that. At least in this room today, I would hope that we can begin with ourselves. Whoever hasn't made it into this room today, we feel they weren't chosen to be, but those of us who are, are chosen to be. And let's make the best out of it. Thank you very much. The Omahene of Asebu traditional area to speak. Nana Dr. Oketechi Amenfi. This is the chief that has voluntarily decided to give out land to our brothers and sisters here in a way to get them to come back home. So, Nananom distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you greetings from Ghana. And from the chiefs and people of our Sebu Charitian area. I feel very honored to be part of this history, this historic meeting at the Consulate of the Republic of Ghana here in New York. I'm ex extremely excited to be part of this history. Indeed, today we will surely go down in history when a delegation made up of government officials and traditional leaders came from Ghana to New York to call on our brothers and sisters in diaspora to return to their roots. Ladies and gentlemen, before I go any further, let me first express my profound gratitude to all those who have contributed time, funds, and other logistics to make this meeting here today possible. First, I want to thank our His Excellency, Anadu Danko Akupado, the President of the Republic of Ghana, for his foresight and giving me his support for the Pan-African Village Project. I thank His Excellency, Professor Emeritus Samuel Amwakun, Council General at the Consulate of the Republic of Ghana here in New York, for accepting to host this meeting here today. I thank Mr. Kwesi Ewa Ababio, the Director of Diaspora Affairs at the Office of the President, and also the Director and the Deputy Director 
ask the Minister of Foreign Affairs for their support and contribution. I'm sincerely indebted to Dr. Omar Johnson for his wonderful support. I'm indebted to Rabbi Cohen, Executive Director of Pan Affairs Foundation for the wonderful support and for making time to join us here today. I will want to thank the Chief, Chief Executive of Coastal Development Authority and, and his deputy for their enthusiasm and support. Let me finally thank Nana Obukasi Ampa, the Apejahin of Asebu Tradition Area and coordinator of Asebu Pan-African Village Project and, uh, and his team for the job, for good job done in ensuring that this meeting took place. Distinguished Chairman, late last year, His Excellency Nana Arudankwa Akupado at a function here in the U.S. declared 2019 as the year of return in commemoration of the 400 years anniversary of the beginning of the slave trade in 1619. It is estimated that the obnoxious trade saw thousands of Africans captured and sold into slavery and shipped across the Atlantic Ocean into the Americas. The Asebu Tradition Council, with, all, with me as a president, have therefore decided to give meaning to the wonderful vision of the president by conceiving the idea of Pan-African Village Project. So what is Pan-African Village Project? On June 20, 2019, that is this year, at a traditional council meeting at the Odumankuma Parish, that is my parish, Odumankuma Parish in Asebu, and attended by Honorable Kamran Duncan, the Central Regional Minister, and Honorable Abba Higgin, the District Chief Executive of Abra Asebu Kaman Kase, on behalf of the chiefs and people, offered to make land available for the development of settlement to be known and called Pan African Village in honor of Africans from the diaspora. <laughs> we are waiting to welcome you back home. Come home to your homeland, your families are waiting for you. We are grateful. We welcome you home. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Asebuman.com. And I'll spell that. Asebuman is A S E B U M A N. A S E B U M A N Asebuman www.asebuman.com. Please visit the site. Uh, contact information has been provided for on the site. We have in our midst Busumru Nana Dakwa. He is a continue of Kokofu Koniao. Busumru Nana Dakwa. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. We are going to hear uh, a statement from government. And it's going to be delivered by Mr. Jerry Ahmed Shaib. He is the CEO of the Coastal Development Authority. Let's give it up for Mr. Jerry Ahmed Shaib. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Greetings from Ghana. We just want to tell you that Ghana presents a compliments to the diaspora community 
and Ghana rolls out the red carpet to encourage resettlement in the motherland. In the heart of the central region called Asebu, this is a follow-up of the W.E.B. Du Bois journey to Ghana several years ago. This journey may have, may have signaled the emergence of a profound desire among Africans in the diaspora to retrace their roots and return to the continent, Africa. Sometime in September 2018, Ghana's president, His Excellency Nanadu Dankwa Kufadu, declared and formally launched the year of return in Washington, D.C. He did not just do that. He did that with the intent of bringing all Africans back home. The essence is simple. The essence is simple. By giving you fresh impetus to the quest to unite Africans on the continent with their brothers and sisters in the diaspora. Now, since independence in 1957, successive Ghanaian leaders have initiated policies to attract Africans abroad back to Ghana. In his maiden independence address, the, the then Prime Minister, Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, sought to frame Africans' liberation. The concept of Africans all over the world coming back to Africa. Nkrumah saw the American Negro as the vanguard, as the vanguard of the African people, said Henry Louis Gates. Ghana's parliament passed a, citizen, a Citizenship Act in 2000 to make provisions for dual citizenship, meaning that people of Ghanaian origin who have acquired citizenships abroad can take up the Ghanaian citizenship as well. That same year, the country enacted the Immigration Act, which provides for a right of abode for any person of African descent in the diaspora to travel and from the country without any hindrance. In 2000, Ghana, in its 50th year of independence, introduced yet another, the Joseph Project. I'm sure you are aware of that. Now, with the Joseph Project, this was to commemorate 200 years since the abolition of slavery and to encourage African, Africans abroad to return. From the narration so far, you would, you would realize that the president, who is the leader of the new patriotic party, the party in government now, has consistently shown support to the diaspora community and his commitment to have them return and settle in Ghana. The reason why we have an icing on the cake for you, that is why we have the year of return now. The icing on the cake is also to have the Pan-African village which we are talking about today. What we are there to do as Coastal Development Authority is to map out technical services for your very comfortable living in the, in the, in the Pan-African village. What we intend to do are uh, a lot, so I'll just run you through some of them. First of all, we are supposed to provide a proper draw out, lay out services, which has all the plans that you can think of. So where you have, you, you have in the Pan-African village, you have a hospital, you, you have a, a mall, you, you have residential places, you have commercial places for industrialized activities, and you have a green area, you have a sports arena, you have gyms and everything. It is the duty of the Coastal Development Authority to map out and plan this place comprehensively for a comfortable living. What we intend to need or to, do to, to expect from you is to ensure that the place is kept clean and cleaner every day. The community will be full of greeneries, gardens, and sustainable farming in both the communities and outskirts of the village to allow for it to grow and eat fresh fruits, vegetables, and crops from within outlying areas. We are expecting you to come and start your own farming projects. So, so you grow what you eat, and that makes you fresher and more solid. Exactly, my point. So all of this plus educational facilities. So we are, we are anticipating a well-managed and uh, developed educational facilities to attract a world-class 
uh, university, depending on how well we come to stay. Because if you're given a 5,000 acre land and you only have 10 people staying on that land, you don't have any educational facility. So the caveat is that come in and stay. When you are given the parcel, you cannot stay in America and still think that you have a parcel of land. Your failure to use it within a certain period of time that will be decided by the chief and his people. The failure to use it means that you lose out on that parcel of land. So if you are given, say, one acre of land or one plot of land, and you fail to use it within, say, in 2020, you are given 2020, and 2021, you fail to use it, you, it elapses. It, it, it no more becomes your land. So it is not just claiming the land and sitting here in New York, but claiming, claiming it and developing it. Because if you fail to develop it, it is no more your land. I just need you to understand that there is no time. If you fail to come and grab yours, you will never get one. I expect you to come home and return home now. God bless you all. So we've heard from the government. We've heard from the office of the president. We've heard from the Omahine. Uh, we're now going to hear from the money man. The man who is going to talk about the financial analysis of the project. I will invite Mr. Alfred Thompson, former deputy manager, former deputy managing director of the National Investment Bank. Once you are here in the embassy with T. Akwaba. Thank you. I was invited here to share with you government's bank. I use the word government's bank because it's fully owned by the government of Ghana, and that is National Investment Bank. At the moment, it's 95% government owned, but before the end of this year, it's going to be 100% government owned. And it should tell you that once it's a government bank, your money is safe. Because everything is covered under the government of Ghana. So even though we quite recently had some financial turmoil in Ghana, we had to clean the banking system, NIBS, National Investment Bank, still stood tall and is still standing tall. It's the only 100% government-owned bank at the moment. Ghana Commercial Bank is about 50% government-owned. ADB is still on the stock market. Um, it's, it's partly government-owned, but NIB is fully government-owned. The 5% share ownership there is being bought over, and government will fully own it very soon. We need you to open an account there. We need you to transfer money home. You can stay here and everything will be done for you. So we came up with a product and it's called the homebound account. The homebound account. Homebound account. It means we need you home. But before you get home, you need the money there. You don't need to carry cash on you and bring it down. You can start putting monies together and transferring it bit by bit. You can come into agreement with the bank and we can make sure that every project is being handled and being controlled and we'll be giving you reports on it. What we're going to do is that we're going to make sure that we get you a permanent rep who will be dealing with all of you from here. So we need your name, your email address and your phone number. Unfortunately, I brought some account opening forms, but it's only up to about 20. And looking at the numbers here and the eagerness of my brothers and sisters here, I know that everybody would want to open an account and come back home. So we'll give you what we have here. However, we'll take your names, your email address, and your phone number. Once I get it and I get back home by Thursday, Friday, I'll make sure that I get you the account person who is going to handle your accounts and they are going to email you directly and start dealing with you. You will be here, you can open your account and everything. All you need is to contact the person and you'll be sending your information down. It depends on what you are investing in. We have fixed deposits, we have treasury bills, we have other investment accounts. So it depends on what you are investing in it and how much you want to invest. You can peg your interest rate for you. And, and that is all going to be done. Sorry, those at the back. That is all going to be done with those, they, your account ho um, holder. They are going to negotiate all the rates with you. So it's not as if you are just going to be throwing a rate and that is it. So we we'll need you to open the accounts and that is what you have to do. Also, those who have um, permanent jobs here, we can look at getting some mortgages for you. 
and it will, it will all be worked out from the account holder and the investment officers over there. Looking at the rate you have to send and the amount you have to send every month for it to be done, your project to go faster for you. So I can assure you that everything is under control and everything is set for you to come back and make sure that you enjoy your journey. I've always believed in one thing. It's not what you do today, but what you leave behind. When Kwame Nkrumah was fighting to get independence, together with the big six, when others, Martin Luther King and the rest were fighting, they were fighting not for themselves, but the future of us. Let us also leave that name so that our children can mention our names and they'll be proud of us. We believe in you. Believe in Ghana. Come back home and let's do it together. God bless us all. Cleo Flores Miller, President General of UNIA Universal Negro Improvement Association, to come read a proclamation uh, for Nana Dr. Okidichi Amenfi the Seventh. Let's give it up for Mr. Miller. Whereas today, 100 years after the clarion call made by the Honorable Marcus Masai Gavi back to Africa, we thank God for eminence Nana Dr. Okatechi Amanfi, who presents a pathway, free land in Ghana to the descendants of the African slave trade and a chorus of hallelujahs can be heard coming from the noble ancestors and quite jubilant from slave descendants all over the earth. Whereas we remember the past, we acknowledge the right excellent Marcus Messiah Gavi with great expectations this year of return. On behalf of His Highness Dr. Ahmed Asalam, Potentate and Supreme Commissioner, the High Executive Council, and members worldwide of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, 1918 and 1929 of the world, we salute His Royal Eminence Nana Dr. Okotechi Amanfi the seventh on this year return in Ghana. Africa for the Africans, those at home and those abroad. One God, one aim, one destiny the education of our children on this side of the water because not every African parent going to send a child back to the continent. But we need an FDMG Africa. So one of the things I'm going to be doing with the monies raised is I'm going to be, through working with Nana and everyone you see here, securing a large plot of land, the center of which will be the FDMG Africa Academy. And then around that academy will be an FDMG community. And those of you who are most serious might be invited to be a part of the particular and specific FDMG Academy. You can still come and get your land and build, but to live within that particular village, you must be unapologetically African family first because we have to remake the African psyche one African boy at a time, one African princess at a time. And we can do this. The creator has been working and waiting for us to get ready to do this work. And don't get into fights with those who ain't from Africa. Leave them sick Negroes here. Look straight out of the bush talking about I'm not from Africa. Straight out of Africa talking about I'm not from Africa. I'm from Morocco. I'm from North America. I'm from Mexico. Negro, you from the white man's public school. Stop playing games with us. Don't fight, brothers and sisters. If they want America, let them have it. If they want Ar Arabized North Africa, let them have it. If they want to go take their chances with Mexico, let them have it. If they belong to a special alien species from a third galaxy, let them have it. But we want Africa, and we want nothing else. And the reason we want Africa isn't just some romanticized memory of a culture. It's because Africa is the richest continent on the earth. And whoever controls Africa rules the world. 
Why do you think there was a World War I in the first place? Look beyond those petty conflicts. Why was there a World War II in the first place? Look beyond those petty conflicts. Uh, I just want to say that uh, on that day, September 2018, at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., when the president of Ghana, Nana Adedankwa Akufuado, announced 2019 as the year of return. I was there in that hall together with my big brother here. I never thought that there was going to be such overwhelming support for the year of return. I just want to say that this year, 2019, we're going to have a record of the number of visas applied for and issued by the Consulate General in New York. On my part, I just want to promise all of you, and you know that before you go to Ghana, you have to come through me. I want to promise you that we've been directed by the president and the government of Ghana that we have to expedite applications for visas for people who want to go to Ghana, especially from our African-American brothers and sisters. So I want to assure you that if you decide to go, and you put your application, it's going to be expedited and done so fast that you will not even believe yourself. So please, we are here for you. We're going to service all those who apply for any type of consular services from New York. And we want to encourage you and just advise you, if I may say that, to go to Ghana, and this is the time. This is the time. Please don't waste time, and anytime you are ready, see the Ghana Consulate General, and we will expedite your application for you to travel to Ghana. I thank you very much. Asebu Pan African Village Project, and it is time to do so. And so I'm going to invite Prof back to the podium, and Oketichi Amenfi, the seventh to launch the Asebu Pan-African Village Project. And with the support of the Omaini of Amenfi traditional area, Asebu traditional area, I declare the Amenfi as Asebu Pan African Village Project duly launched. Yeah.